Hello and welcome to Matador News. I'm AJ Romero. And I'm Mike Serrano. Two people who returned to Riverside County from West Africa have been <coughs> monitored for two weeks for Ebola. Riverside County Department of Public Health says the two are considered at low risk for developing the disease. The two do not show any symptoms of the virus and deny having contact with anybody with the illness during their travels. The two are cooperating with health officials and will be monitored for one week. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel says all U.S. troops returning from West Africa will be kept in supervised isolation for 21 days. Hagel says he acted in response to a recommendation sent to him by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Hagel says he feels soldiers are different from health care workers because they are not in West Africa by choice. They are not volunteers. Uh, and uh, this is also a policy that... Uh, was discussed in great detail by the communities. Over 1,000 U.S. troops are in Liberia and Senegal supporting efforts to combat Ebola. This recommendation counters those of the CDC and other public health officials. The CDC says Ebola is difficult to catch and can be transferred only when the carrier has easily identifiable symptoms. A Pomona SWAT officer has died after being shot while serving a search warrant. 46-year-old Sean Diamond was one of the 14 SWAT officers investigating a motorcycle gang on Thursday morning. Diamond was the first officer to enter the residence and was struck when a suspect fired a single round from a shotgun. Diamond was hit above his bulletproof vest, possibly in the back of the head. He was wearing a helmet at the time of the shooting. With the successful launch today of the Atlas V in Florida, NASA officials wish they could say the same about the launch Tuesday evening. The rocket and spacecraft, which cost more than $200 million, exploded six seconds after launch. Although 5,000 pounds of supplies for the International Space Station were lost, the Russian Space Agency launched a cargo vessel with three tons of food earlier today. The Atlas V rocket is carrying a satellite for the U.S. Air Force. NASA officials are currently trying to find a cause for today's, sorry, yesterday's explosion. Scientists say there is no way of stopping the 2,000-degree river of lava as it inches closer to the homes on the big island of Hawaii. The lava is traveling 30 feet per hour, much, much slower than walking place. It began moving toward Pahoa in June when the volcano released the liquid rock. Hawaii officials have built roads to give residents escape routes from the lava flow. While many residents have evacuated from their homes, health officials say no mandatory evacuations are in place. South Korean intelligence officials say North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been absent throughout most of September because of a cyst in his right ankle. South Korea's National Intelligence Service told lawmakers the cyst was found earlier the year, this year on the North Korean leader's right ankle. Lawmakers were told European experts hand handled the surgery for Kim's tarsal tunnel syndrome. The cyst may have caused nerve or muscle damage, but Kim is believed to be recovering. An infantry contingent named Iraqi Peshmerga is crossing into Kobani from Turkey, signaling new cooperation from the Turkish government. The fighters will enter Kobani and help reinforce the Kurds, <coughs> who have been defending against Islamic State fighters since early September. The Peshmerga will bring support in the form of heavy weapons, artillery, and gear for the ongoing Kurdish defense of Kobani. The force is made up of 161 Peshmerga fighters who are better trained and equipped than their Syrian counterparts. And in Western Iraq, the Islamic State fighters advancing on the capital city of Baghdad reportedly executed 30 men. The militants targeted both fighters allied with the government and security members. The Islamic State have already seized a third of Iraq. Mexican authorities have found a grave that may be connected to those 43 missing college students. The mass grave was found near the city of Iguala, <coughs> where the students were last seen after an attack by gang members. Four Guerreros Unidos gang members have been detained and are believed to have carried out the crime. A total of 56 people have been arrested in connection with the 43 students. Authorities still have not located the students. Now let's go to Angelica Rizon with the latest news in sports. Thanks, Mike. <coughs> the Kansas City Royals are not ready to give up on their goal to win the World Series. In Game 6, the Royals beat the Giants 10-0, tying the series 3-3. The Kansas fans roared with excitement with, when Mike Mustakas hit a home run in the seventh inning and sealed their victory. Game 7 will be played tonight in Kansas City for the World Series Championship. Catch the game on Fox at 5 tonight. 
the Los Angeles Lakers play their first opening season game against the Houston Rockets, losing 90 to 108 and getting their season off to a shaky start. During the fourth quarter, Lakers Kobe Bryant and Rockets Dwight Howard got into it, got into it when Howard elbowed Bryant on the chin. Howard got a flagrant one foul while Bryant received a personal foul. Here's the thing. This was the first time the two of them had played together since Howard left the Lakers in 2013. To add to the upset of the game, rookie Julius Randle broke his right leg during the fourth quarter. This leaves the Lakers with little hope to make it into the playoffs this year. Now let's go to Juanique Elliott for business news. If you're looking to buy those last minute Thanksgiving supplies at Costco this year, you might want to think again. Costco will be closed this Thanksgiving. A Costco spokesman says the employees work especially hard during the holiday season and they deserve Thanksgiving off to spend time with their families. Costco was closed last Thanksgiving for the same reason. They will be open on Black Friday, but this time is still unannounced. Costco will also be closed on Christmas. The Federal Trade Commission is suing AT&T for the misleading mobile customers with unlimited data plans, slowing their connection speeds. The FTC says AT&T failed to disclose the fact that when these customers reach a certain data li limit and their billing cycle, it reduced their connection speeds by 90%. Many common smartphone applications such as web browsing, GPS navigation, and streaming video become difficult for nearly imp or in nearly impossible to use. AT&T says they do not understand why the FTC would choose to take this action against a company that manages its network resources to provide the best possible service to all customers. The Federal Reserve says it will, be, it will end its bond buying program by the end of the month. The Fed says the bond buying program has served its purpose by contributing to stronger job growth. The Fed still plans to keep short-term internet interest rates near zero for a considerable time. The rates can affect consumer and business loans. On Wall Street, stock prices started the day up, but has dropped on the news from the Fed. At last check, the Dow Jones average is 16,929. That's down about 75 points. Gas prices are at a four-year low. The national average is just over $3 a gallon. Now let's go to Angelica Arison with Health News. Google is experimenting with designing nanoparticulates that would detect cancer and other diseases before they begin. Head of Life Sciences Division Andrew Conrad says it would be to a human body what an oil change is to a car. It will detect minor changes in tumor cells and other diseases before it becomes a problem. The company has started research and studies on 10,000 people involving nanoparticulates. A six-week-old six kitten is now recovering from a corrective surgery. The, kid, the <coughs> kitten muffin Went for, went for a microchip procedure back in October. After the procedure, the owner noticed Muffin was becoming lethargic. When the owner took Muffin to a neurologist, she learned her pet had been paralyzed. The x-ray showed the microchip was placed on his spinal cord. More than $6,000 have been raised for Muffin's care. Now let's go to Juanique Elliott for entertainment news. Taylor Swift's first officially pop album has been released. Swift's album may be the first album this year to sell one million copies within the first week. This is Swift's best work. He says it is a sophisticated pop tour de force that deserves to be as popular commercially as the Robin worshiping bloggers. Swift has also been announced as Billboard's Woman of the Year this year. Goosebumps author R.L. Stein takes to Twitter to give his followers a short new creepy story. He used the 140 characters to tell a tale titled, What's in my sandwich? The story is about a dad who goes to a diner to order an egg salad sandwich when he discovers some, creature, some creatures crawling out. Instead of reporting it to the re restaurant, he thinks these new creatures will make him rich. He takes the sandwich to his house to keep it safe. 14 tweets was all it took to creep his followers out. You can find the ending on his Twitter. Marvel announces a huge lineup of films. The films include a two-part Avengers movie, a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, and The Inhumanes. Marvel says it wants to open up a whole new cinematic universe. The films are expected to be in theaters between 2016 through 2018. Captain Marvel will be a female super, alt, super alter ego of Carol Danvers. 
actor in the film 42 and get on up chadwick bossman has confirmed to play black panther and now back to the news thank you for watching matador news i'm aj romero and i'm mike serrano have, have a, a good day, day.